We on? Rolling. Sweet. Hey guys, Nick from MacArthur Camera House again. People have been begging me to make this video since like 2011. I just always forget to make it. So we're making it today, okay? This is what is in my everyday camera bag. So this is my everyday kind of kit. Obviously I use lots of different cameras and I use drones and I use different gimbals and I use different lenses. This all fits in my backpack and I love having a small kit because I've got a small car and I don't like carrying too much stuff around and it just makes life like 10 times easier, right? I'm gonna run you through my everyday kit, starting with my bodies. At the moment, my two bodies of choice are Panasonic GH5S and my old trusty GH4 as a little backup camera. I really love the look that the Lumix cameras give me. They're nice and small. They fit on the smaller gimbals. They break down into my backpack. The micro Four Thirds lenses are super small. And if I'm doing some action sports stuff and I need to get in some small spaces, they are ideal. At the moment, I've got a 12 to 35 and a 35 to 100. Remembering that the crop factor on an MFT means that this is really a 24 to 70 and this is really a 70 to 200. When I was first getting into filmmaking, I hated small cameras because they felt like toys, but I think Lumix have done a really good job with how they've actually built the camera. So the ergonomics of the Lumix series is really good. If you've ever filmed action sports or you're looking to get into filming action sports, everybody knows about the fisheye lens. The Lumix fisheye is amazing. I haven't had it very long yet, but all the experience I have had with it has been positive. It provides great image quality. It's nice and small. So once again, I can get nice and close to the ramps if I'm filming action sports. I even use it in music videos, trying to get a POV perspective. All right, so when I did move over to Lumix, I went and got myself a Metabones EF to MFT adapter. So what that does is it allows me to shoot Canon lenses on the Lumix bodies, which is awesome because I shoot Canon lenses on Sony's, I shoot Canon lenses on Canon's, and to be able to shoot them on Lumix too, just makes my life way easier. The Canon lenses I generally use are the 16 to 35, so I have something nice and wide. The 70 to 200, so I can get that nice depth of field from a distance and also the 50 millimeter, which is my favorite lens of all time. I've always loved 50 millimeters. I've always had one since I started shooting and I'm always gonna have one till I stop shooting. It's always important to take good care of your lenses. Every morning before I go out to shoot or the night before, I'll go through and make sure everything's clean. There's no dust on my filter. I always go through and make sure my lenses are tidy as well. The caps are on all of them and that everything's sweet to go much earlier in advance because you don't want to get out on the set and then realize you've got marks on your lenses, you're missing lens caps, or most importantly, there's something on your sensor. You can never have enough batteries and trust me on this and my friends are going to pull me up on this because when I was younger, I was the worst for this, but always make sure you got a full set of batteries, check well in advance that you shoot that they're all charged. So I think every filmmaker and even photographer should have a mini LED panel in their bag. You can go get these at MacArthur Camera House, they'll sort you out and point you in the right direction. They come in various sizes, various prices, but a little light like that can make a massive difference. If you're shooting a scene inside a car or you need to light up something in the background, these are awesome. Most of them run on batteries, but you can get rechargeable ones and ones that have power systems too. Go check them out, you need one of these. Something that I've only recently invested in, but I wish I invested in a long time ago, is a small HD monitor. In terms of doing things like making sure I'm in frame, putting the crop bars on the screen, and even external recording, they're amazing. Sound quality will make or break a video, and I'm sure every other filmmaker will agree with me there. The audio equipment that I generally use is a Rode VideoMic Pro. I've had VideoMic Pros since 2009. They've never once failed me. I've also got their lapel kit. I'm pretty sure there's a new version of this now, but this one's still doing me strong, so I'm sure their new version's even better. So go check that out. Audio equipment, as I said, super important. You can save a lot of time in post, not having to mess around with sound levels and stuff. So try and get it the best you can in camera. And with audio equipment like this, it's really easy to tidy up anyway. Next off, I always have a pair of headphones because when I am shooting audio, I like to listen in on the camera and make sure everything's sounding good. So get yourself a good pair of headphones, noise canceling even so you can block out all the other sounds on set. One thing I will say is always have your phone on set. There are so many different apps that you can use on your phone now to help you when you're out filmmaking whether it's lens checkers, whether it's drone operation maps, whether it's 
using your phone as a monitor like I used to. And in saying that, always have a fully charged power bank. It used to be useless with my phone dying all the time. So I keep one of these on me and I'm always sweet to go. Your memory cards are everything when you're out on the set. If you lose your memory card, you've wasted the day. So get a nice little case. I've got a little Pelican case, which you can get from MacArthur Camera House too. Keep all my cards in there. It's got spots for micro SDs and SDs. But if you shoot CFs or whatever, they make options for that too. I recently bought an iPad Pro and this has improved my workflow incredibly. I use my Apple Pencil to make graphics. I use it as an external monitor if someone wants to check it out. It works really well with my MacBook through AirPlay. Even has the capability to be a second monitor. So invest in one of these if you can, they're awesome. That brings me to my MacBook Pro. I've had this thing for five years now and it's still going. I've edited hundreds of thousands of videos and I don't know how it's still working. It hasn't skipped a beat yet. I'm gonna upgrade soon, that's a 2013 model. You get what you pay for when it comes to MacBooks. They're awesome and for video editing and anything creative, Apple is definitely my preference. In terms of keeping my footage safe, I use Lacey Rugged Drives. Uh, they're great with Apple as their Thunderbolt. You can daisy chain them and if you drop them, it's not the end of the world because they're super well protected. So gimbals are absolutely amazing. To me, they're the biggest game changer that has happened in my film career. I originally picked up the Ronin M, then the Ronin S, and today I've got the Ronin SC, which is awesome for smaller cameras like the Lumix. I think it's so cool how the app on the phone gives you full control of the gimbal. You can really adjust absolutely any movement. Same with the DJI drones. But the SC is a great, cheap gimbal and it does the job perfectly. My current bag of choice is this Crumpler backpack. I've had this for quite some time now. It's traveled around the world with me. Uh, it fits all of this in it, surprisingly. It's got a raincoat. It's got a spot for my laptop. It's got camera compartments and lens compartments. It's got spots in the front where I can keep my drives and they're nice and safe. To be able to fit all this in it just makes my life 10 times easier. So once more, this is my everyday kit. I've got plenty more gear I can run you through, but if I'm just going out shooting something quick, this is what I'm taking. It's never skipped a beat, does everything it needs to do. I've shot documentaries, I've shot music videos, I've shot action sports films on this stuff, and it's always done me well. If you're looking to expand your kit or see what the latest tech is, come see us at MacArthur Camera House and we'll help you out.